bears are one of the most successful large mammals on Earth. They've adapted to cold, to heat, to forests, mountains, coastlines, and jungles. They've crossed continents, changed diets, and evolved into eight distinct species, each suited to the land it calls home. From North America to Asia, from the Andes to the Arctic, bears have found a way to survive. But not in Africa. And it's not like the continent doesn't have the right conditions. Africa has dense tropical forests, cool mountain ranges, high plateaus, vast river systems, and a rich mix of vegetation and animal life. It has everything from high-altitude cloud forests to coastal wetlands, habitats where other bear species have done well elsewhere. Food wouldn't be a problem either, with berries, roots, insects, fish, small mammals, and plenty of scavenging opportunities, most bear species could easily find something to eat. So, if the landscape fits and the resources are there, why are there no bears in Africa? Africa may not have bears today, but it didn't always look like this. If you go far enough back, you'll find evidence of massive bears that once lived and died on African soil. One of them was Agriotherium a true giant. This bear lived during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs, roughly between 10 and 2.5 million years ago. Fossils have been found in eastern and southern Africa, including regions like Ethiopia, Tanzania, and South Africa, placing it squarely in ancient African ecosystems. It was likely one of the largest bear species ever, with some individuals estimated to weigh up to 900 kilograms, more than most polar bears today. But Agriotherium wasn't a typical predator. Its teeth and jaw structure suggest it was more of a scavenger than a hunter. It had powerful crushing molars, ideal for breaking bones and accessing marrow. That means it probably used its size and strength to dominate kills made by other predators, muscling in on carcasses rather than chasing prey itself. But in Africa, that strategy had its limits. This was already a continent full of efficient carnivores and scavengers, including early big cats and bone-crushing hyenas. Agriotherium likely faced intense competition, and over time, as climates shifted and ecosystems changed, it disappeared, going extinct around the end of the Pliocene, possibly due to being outcompeted in a rapidly evolving food web. Another bear genus, Indarctus, also appeared in Africa, though it didn't leave as strong a mark. Indarctus lived from the Middle Miocene to Early Pliocene, roughly 11 to 5 million years ago, and was smaller than Agriotherium. But like Agriotherium, it too vanished from Africa before the modern era. While less is known about its extinction, it likely faced similar pressures, rising temperatures, shrinking woodlands, and increased competition from better adapted carnivores. The last bear to live in Africa was one that existed well into human history the Atlas Bear. Unlike the prehistoric giants, the Atlas Bear lived during the Holocene, and its range extended across the Atlas Mountains of North Africa, including modern-day Morocco, Algeria, and Libya. The Atlas Bear was medium-sized, likely resembling a short-faced version of the American Black Bear, and it seemed well-adapted to mountainous, forested terrain. But its decline had little to do with natural competition or climate. The real threat came from people. The Romans hunted atlas bears for sport and used them in arena games alongside lions and leopards. As human populations expanded, the bear's habitat was increasingly fragmented and destroyed. By the time the 19th century arrived, the atlas bear was already rare. The last known individuals likely died out in the late 1800s, hunted to extinction. The final chapter of bears in Africa written by human hands. Even though bears once lived in Africa, their presence was always limited, both in space and in time. And unlike in other parts of the world, they never managed to establish themselves across the continent. There's no evidence of bear populations moving deeper into Central or Southern Africa, no fossils scattered through tropical basins or across open plains, just isolated species in the north and then silence. Part of that has to do with the shape of the continent itself. Geographically, Africa narrows as you move north. What looks like an open land bridge from Eurasia is actually squeezed between coastlines and dominated by one of the most inhospitable landscapes on Earth, 
the Sahara Desert. It's not just dry, it's ecologically empty for a species like a bear. There's no tree cover, no consistent food, and no shelter from extreme heat. For smaller, desert-adapted animals, it's passable. But for a large, mostly solitary mammal that needs shade, water, and calories, it's a dead zone. That single environmental barrier may have been enough to stop bears from ever reaching the heart of Africa. And for the ones that did live north of it, like the Atlas bear, there was simply nowhere else to go. But beyond geography, there's another problem. Africa's predator guild is unlike anything bears evolved alongside. Most bear species originated in environments where competition came from other solitary carnivores. Big cats, for the most part or wolves in smaller groups. In contrast, Africa's carnivore networks are more densely packed and more aggressive. You have animals that cooperate, defend territories, chase prey for miles, or scavenge in large, persistent groups. It's a high-pressure system, and bears, for all their strength and adaptability, don't slot into it easily. They're not pursuit hunters. They don't form packs. They're flexible, but not fast strong but not social, and while they're excellent opportunists in temperate zones, they're far less competitive in ecosystems where every kill attracts a crowd. This might explain why Agriotherium, despite its size, never became dominant in Africa. Its strength meant it could take over carcasses, but it couldn't outlast the pressure. Over time, as landscapes opened up and forests receded, that strategy broke down. The idea of a bear surviving in Africa might sound strange now, but it's not impossible. So the question is worth asking. Could any bear species survive in Africa today? To even consider that, we have to look at what makes Africa challenging for bears, starting with one of their biggest biological limitations, heat. Most bears are built for cold or temperate environments. They evolved in places with strong seasonal changes where it pays to store fat and stay insulated. Their thick fur, large body mass, and low surface area relative to size all help them conserve heat, which is great in the mountains of Tibet or the forests of Alaska, but becomes a problem the moment temperatures start to climb. Unlike many African predators, bears don't pant efficiently, and they don't sweat. Their main tools for cooling down are behavioral. In warm climates, they slow down, rest in the shade, bathe in cold water, or avoid activity during the heat of the day. Black bears and grizzlies have been seen soaking for hours in rivers, lying on their backs with their paws in the air, or digging into cool earth to stay regulated. Some even shift to a semi-nocturnal pattern just to avoid overheating. This puts them at a clear disadvantage in environments where heat isn't a seasonal obstacle. It's a permanent condition. Most of sub-Saharan Africa is hot year-round, and even the nights don't offer much relief in the open savannas or dry woodlands. For a bear, operating at full size and full insulation under those conditions would be extremely difficult, without constant access to shade, water, and rest. But while most of the continent would be unsuitable, not all of Africa is hostile to bear-like life. There are still pockets of terrain where a bear, under the right conditions, might stand a chance. The Congo Basin, for example, is one of the world's largest tropical rainforests, with stable temperatures, dense canopy cover, and high humidity. It has fruiting trees, rivers, thick undergrowth, and relatively low visibility, the kind of environment where a small, cautious omnivore could stay hidden and well-fed. Then there are the Albertine Rift Highlands and the Ethiopian Plateau, both of which feature elevated forested terrain with cooler temperatures and patchy human development. These regions have more vertical space, lower ambient temperatures, and access to mixed food sources, including roots, fruits, invertebrates, and small animals. But habitat alone isn't enough. To survive here, a bear would also need to compete, and that's where things get complicated. African ecosystems are already saturated with predators. In forests, leopards rule the shadows. On the ground, Bush pigs and baboons compete for many of the same resources a bear would target, and human pressure is constant. Logging, farming, poaching, and habitat fragmentation all make life harder for solitary, wide-ranging animals. So if a bear were to survive in Africa today, 
it would need to be something very different from the typical image of a grizzly or a brown bear. It would need to be smaller, lighter, less reliant on meat, and highly skilled at climbing or hiding. It would need to move cautiously, avoid open ground, and possibly shift its activity patterns to avoid both heat and conflict. And this isn't just theoretical. There's already a bear that fits this profile. The Andean bear, or spectacled bear, lives in the mountainous forests of South America, in places like Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. It survives near the equator, at elevations ranging from lowland jungle to mist-covered cloud forests. What keeps it going is a combination of traits. Small size, a mostly herbivorous diet, excellent climbing ability, and a preference for thick vegetation and high altitudes. It avoids competition by staying out of open terrain, minimizes conflict by moving alone, and doesn't rely on hunting to meet its energy needs. It's cautious, elusive, and adapted to a very narrow ecological niche, but it works. And that's the key insight. A bear can survive in the tropics, but only under very specific conditions, and usually by limiting what it tries to do. It can't act like a grizzly, a polar bear, or even a temperate black bear. It has to specialize, compromise, and stay out of trouble. That model could theoretically apply to parts of Africa. In a dense, mountainous forest, a bear with similar traits, light-framed, tree-oriented, fruit-eating, and behaviorally passive, might have a narrow window of opportunity. But it would be walking a fine line the entire time, with very little room for error. One bad season, one shift in human pressure, and the balance would collapse. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.